All right, everybody, we are at the very end. This is the last video that we're going to be doing. And we're really at the easiest part here. This one's going to take us about 10 minutes to make this video. It's not very long because we're talking about square roots. Okay, so what number is equal to the square root of 49? Okay, well, we know that 7 times 7, let me get a, a Word document here. And we'll make a new document so that we can write on it. Put it right here and draw. So we're doing square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7 because 7 times 7 equals 49. So that is number 1. Remember, the square root is what number you would have to multiply by itself to get the number underneath the radical. So on this one, number 2, they're asking for us to use a calculator to approximate. So this is just learning how to use a calculator, 174. So basically, your very simple four banger will have a square root sign on it. And you're just going to um, put that on there. Now, on your final exam, I will not have any of these that you have to do with a calculator because you won't have a calculator for your final exam. So, but this is something you need to know how to do. So I'm going to do it for you. 174, we're going to take the square root of it. And it is 13.1909. I'm going to stop there because we're, the, the digits keep going, but we're going to round this to the nearest hundredth, which is right here. And since there's a zero after it, we're just going to cut that off right there. And 13.19 is the answer to, oops, I did number three. This is number three. I skipped, my eyeballs skipped over. So that is number three. Now we're gonna go do number two. 13.19 is the square root of 174, which was number three. Okay, so now we're going to do number two. And it says use a calculator to approximate the square root of 20.4. Now, I know, let's talk about approximating a little bit. Suppose I was going to tell you what numbers 20.4 would be between. 20.4 would be between 4 and 5. So we could say the square root of 20.4 is between 4 and 5. Now, how do I know that? I know that because if I squared 4, I would get 16. If I squared 20, the square root of 20.4, I'd get 20.4, because you square the square root and you get what is underneath it. And then I square the five and I would get 25. And 20.4 is in between 16 and 25. So I know that this answer that I'm about to get from the calculator is going to be between four and five. So. I'm going to show you on the calculator. I'm going to go ahead and do that work now that I have approximated that. And I'm going to get 20.4. And I'm going to hit the square root sign. And it is 4.5166. Now I'm going to stop there even though the digits keep on going because I'm trying to round to the nearest hundredth which is right here so I'm going to look at the digit behind it it's greater than five this six is greater than five which means my answer will be 4.52 and that concurs with what we had originally said that 
the square root of 20.4 would be between 4 and 5, and indeed it is between 4 and 5, almost right exactly halfway in between, very close to that, isn't it? Now, anything that is not exact is approximate. So we're getting an approximation of the square root of 20.5 because it is not exact. Remember, I said this continues on and on with several more numbers, and we're just approximating that number, okay? So we already did 2 and 3, so let's do number 4. So I'm going to get another Word document here, nice, clean, new one. And we're going to do number 4. Question four, what is the value of the square root of 25? Now this one, notice they don't ask us to approximate it because 25 is a perfect square and five squared gives us 25. So the square root of 25 is five. There's no approximation to it. It is exactly five. Okay, number five. It says, find con two consecutive whole numbers that, let me get the rest of the problem here, square root of 113 lies between. So that means we're going to do what we just did, square root of 113, I believe is what it is, square root of 113. So we're going to find a number that is the upper bound and a number that is a lower bound. We're looking for two consecutive whole numbers that this number lies between. Now I'm gonna come back and use my knowledge of squares. I know that five squared is 20, 25, six squared is 36, seven squared, I could keep on going, but I know that 10 squared is 100, and I know that 11 squared is 121. Okay, so I know 10 squared is 100, it is less than 113, and 11 squared is, oops, I wrote 120, but I really meant to write 121. 11 squared is 121. So, the square root of 113 must lie between 10 and 11. Okay, so I'm going to erase this down here and we're going to do our little check. We're going to square each part of this and make sure we were right. 10 squared is 100. The square root of 113 squared is 113. And the square of 11 is 121. Okay, and we wind up with 113 being between 100 and 121. Okay, so we're going to number six. And we're going to write. 700,000 in scientific notation. Scientific notation is where we use a number times 10 to some power. Okay, now we know the decimal is right there. At the end of every number is the decimal. We don't usually show the decimal, but when we're going to scientific notation, we need to do that. So this, putting the decimal right there, we always want when we're changing to scientific notation for the decimal to be right after the first non-zero number, okay? So we moved this one, two, three, four, five spaces. So 10 to the fifth, times 7 is the scientific notation that will give us exactly 700,000, okay? So 7, let's check it, 7, 
and then remember each power of 10 we're going to move the decimal from right there back five spaces one two three four five we fill in with the zeros and we have seven hundred thousand so this is the answer and that was the check number seven okay seven is ten to the fifth power which means that i'm going to start with the one now remember ten to the first power is ten 10 to the second power is 100, third power, fourth power, fifth power. So whenever we see 10 to the fifth power or 10 to any power, we're going to have that number of zeros after the one. So 10 to the first power, second power, third power, fourth power, fifth power. So the fast way is just to put a one and add five zeros. And we can put our comma in here. So 100,000 is 10 to the fifth power. Okay, so now we're going to go over here, get a new document. Okay, and we're on question number eight. Write 8.78 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, now, 8.78 is what we're starting with, and the 10 to the 6 tells us that we're going to move the decimal place six places to the right. So here's our decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now our new decimal is here, and we're going to fill in with 0, 0, 0, zero. So the new answer, eight, seven, eight, zero, 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 zero. Now, since my decimal's there, but it's a whole number, I'm not going to put a decimal there. We'll just come over here, put one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. So this is the scientific notation, and now this is called standard notation. Okay, and standard notation is right here, and it will be 8,780,000 is the standard notation. And this is the scientific notation. Okay, number nine, question number nine. Rewrite. 10 million as a power of 10. So 10 million is the standard form of the number. Okay, so we're going to put its standard form. And now we're just going to put 10. And how many zeros do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 10 to the 7th is the power of 10 that you would write that at. Now, it, that is not technically in scientific notation. For it to be in scientific notation, I would say 1 times 10 to the 7. So, that's a little redundant. We would usually just write 10 to the 7th. Okay, so number 10. And last one on this lesson is write 9 times 10 to the 6th in standard notation. 9 times 10 to the 6th. So all we're going to do is write down the number 9, realizing that our decimal is right there after it. And we're going to move our decimal 6 places to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, we're going to fill in zeros. We'll start here, zero, 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 zero. Now the new decimal is here at the end, but we would not 
normally leave it there in our final answer. So let's get a little bit more room. We're going to say, let's write this a little cleaner. Nine with six zeros. Six zeros because the six is the power. One, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. And nine million is the standard form notation. And we are done with lesson 8.2 and 8.3. And we are done with our last lessons. Now, I will be making a video for the more difficult of the problems on the um, final exam review. But there are many problems that are really pretty simple. And I am including, including the answers on those final exam review sheets. So um, I will include the more difficult problems in a video, but I'm not going to do the easier ones in the video. We are winding down and getting close. This is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day.